Okay, so here we are using balanced chemical equations to help find us the mole relationships and so the mass relationships in chemical reactions. Remember, the balanced chemical equation gives you the mole ratio or the stoichiometry of how the reactants react to give products. So from our first question here, number one, we can see that one mole of copper oxide reacts with one mole of hydrogen to give us one mole of copper and one mole of water. We don't usually include ones in our, as our coefficients in the equation, but I pop them in to help us. The question asks us how much hydrogen is needed, what mass of hydrogen is needed to react with 40 grams of copper oxide. Well, 40 grams of copper oxide will not react with 40 grams of hydrogen. One mole of copper oxide will react with one mole of hydrogen. So let's find out how many moles of copper oxide we've got first. And the number of moles of copper oxide will be equal to the mass divided by the relative molecular mass, or the molar mass, which is the relative atomic masses of copper oxide added together, 64 plus 16, which gives me 40 divided by 80, which gives me 0 0.5 moles. Now, from my balanced chemical equation, I can see that one mole of copper oxide reacts with one mole of hydrogen. Well, I don't have one mole of copper oxide, I've got half a mole of, cop of copper oxide. So, since the ratio in the reaction of copper oxide to hydrogen is one to one, I need half a mole of hydrogen. And half a mole of hydrogen is equal to 0.5 multiply the molar mass of hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas is diatomic, so its mass for one mole of it is 2 multiplied by 1, 1 from the periodic table. That gives me 0.5 multiplied by 2, which gives me 1 gram of hydrogen. That's how much is needed to react completely with the copper oxide. Next, what mass of oxygen reacts with 192 grams of magnesium? Well, again, here's our equation which gives us the stoichiometry, the ratio of the reactants in the reaction. This time, two moles of magnesium react with one mole of oxygen. How many moles of magnesium do we have? Well, we've got 192 grams. 192 grams of magnesium, well, let's work out the number of moles of magnesium. It'll be equal to the mass in grams divided by the molar mass. From our periodic table, we see that's 24, the relative atomic mass of magnesium. 192 divided by 24 gives me 8 moles of magnesium. Well, again, from our ratio over here, 2 moles of magnesium react with 1 mole of oxygen. So, if 2 moles of magnesium need 1 mole of oxygen, 8 moles of magnesium will need 4 moles of oxygen. So, 4 moles of oxygen needed and that corresponds to 4 multiplied by the relative molecular mass of oxygen. Oxygen is diatomic. Gives us 2 multiplied by 16. So we've got 4 multiplied by 32. 128 grams of oxygen required. Okay, moving on. Number three, what mass of sulfur trioxide is formed from, uh, from 96 grams of sulfur dioxide? So I've got 96 grams of sulfur dioxide. How many grams 
of sulfur trioxide will produ be produced. Now we've got a 2 to 2 ratio. 2 moles of sulfur dioxide gives us 2 moles of sulfur trioxide, which is just the same as 1 to 1 ratio. So, how many moles of sulfur dioxide do we have first? Well, the number of moles of sulfur dioxide is equal to its mass, 96, divided by its relative molecular mass. Well, sulfur from your periodic table is 32, and 2 16s is 32. So we've got 96 divided by 64, which gives us 1.5 moles of sulfur dioxide. Well, therefore, the number of moles of sulfur trioxide produced will be the same because it's a 1 to 1 ratio. So that will be 1.5 moles as well. What's the mass of 1.5 moles of sulfur dioxide? Well, we multiply a number of moles by the molar mass, the relative molecular mass of sulfur trioxide, which gives me um, 32, oops, that should be a 3, 32 plus 48 which gives me 1.5 multiplied by 80, which gives me 120 grams of sulfur trioxide. Okay, number four. This time we're trying to find out what mass of carbon monoxide is needed to react with 480 kilograms kilograms, not grams, of iron oxide. And that's iron 3 oxide we're dealing with. Well, the relative molecular mass of iron oxide is equal to 56 multiplied by 2 for the iron plus 48 multiplied by 3 for the oxygen, which gives us 160. So the number of moles of iron oxide we have is equal to the mass, 48, sorry, 480 kilograms, so it's in grams now. Divide that by the molar mass, the relative molecular mass, and it gives us 3,000 moles. Well, the ratio of the reactants, iron oxide, is 1 to 3 carbon monoxide. So the number of moles of carbon monoxide required is equal to 3,000 multiplied by 3. 9,000 moles are required of carbon monoxide. And that means then, if we convert our moles of carbon monoxide into a mass, it's 9,000, that's how many moles we've got, multiplied by the mass of one mole, carbon monoxide, 12 plus 16, relative atomic masses from our periodic table, and that gives us 252,000 grams, or 252 kilograms. I hope you've understood that. Go back over it if you haven't, and pause at the necessary places. Use your periodic table, and remember if you need extra help, please come and see me. Bye for now.